guys, welcome back to Nat1 Videos. Today I'm doing a partial little video for uh, my little house, which is my first tabletop terrain building craft that I attempted. I originally wasn't going to make a video about this because it is my first, it was going to be a practice piece. And then it started to get good and I realised that, oh, I'm missing an opportunity to make a cool video here. So. I have included some footage from the post cardboard structural stage. I've included the shingles, woodwork, the stucco plastering, the stonework, and the windows and stuff. There are a few photographs here right now if you want to see the original shell, the cardboard shell. And that's it. So, hope you enjoy the rest of the video. And yeah, I quite like it. You know, so here we go. how far I've got. Uh, they're really really happy with the shingles so the way I've been making the shingles is I've got balsa wood and I've just been cutting them into strips like this and then tapering the edges and giving them a bit more of a sort of not straight cut feel and then I'm cutting them into little bits like this. Little shingles, and I'm gluing them on. It's taking a really, really long time. The windows were done with matchsticks. Uh, all of the rest of the woodwork was done with carved balsa wood the same way. Um, apart from these little wooden parts here, these were circular plugs, which I shaved down to be angular. And I've got some XPS foam coming in the post, which I am going to hopefully do a brick base around the bottom and obviously around the chimney. And then it'll be on to painting it. Uh, I'm going to be watching Black Magic Craft a lot and trying to figure out how to do the paint job. So, little update. So yeah, I'm still working on this little house. As you can see, I've only done the shingles on that side and still got to finish the shingles on this side but I want to finish the chimney off before I finish the ching shingles on this side so I've got some XPS foam and I used my little heat cutter which I made myself uh, to cut some little strips and I made some little brick sections that I'm going to attach to the bottom like this with some hot glue. Attached to the bottom like this. With some hot glue. Okay. So I'm sitting here editing the footage of this video. It's like Inception uh, video within a video within a video or something. Uh, I deleted the footage of me gluing that part. So we'll just skip to the next bit. Okay, so I cut a little bit of XPS foam. I've tapered the edges with this little carving knife. Uh, I'm going to use this to texture it, which is rolled up tin foil. Uh, I got that tip off Black Magic Craft, as I'm sure anyone who makes miniatures is getting lots of tips off Black Magic Craft. And well, that's a really good tip because that's really nice. First things first, I want to stick this one in. So that hot glue was a bit hot and it burnt through a very small part because my XPS foam was very thin. Good to know. But anyway, I'm just going to ply on and just keep doing it the way I'm doing it.
Okay, here we go. That's probably burning through as we speak, but whatever. I'll get my pan and I'll make these lines meet up. Try and make them blend in. So yeah, I'm gonna get some kind of filler to go down that edge. I need to cut more pieces for this side now. And here, and here. Okay, so I have covered the chimney in XPS foam. I'm hoping that I can find something to fill these little gaps at some point. But with this project, I'm just bar barging ahead. I don't want to waste too much time uh, trying to figure stuff out. I'm just trying to get my first build under my belt. And now I'm just going to start drawing the stones into it. And there we go, I finished the chimney with the pen. Um, I think even at this stage that looks pretty good. Once the paint wash goes on, I mean, there are some little gaps here and stuff that I want to fill so it looks more in keeping. I'll find some kind of filler and then make sure the lines match up, like here. A few jobs left to do, a little bit of brickwork along the bottom plaster in here and in, in there, plaster in around here and in here, up in here. Yep, and then it's a paint job. After finishing off the chimney, I just carried on with my shingles all the way up here. Um, I've got to the top row. The only reason I've been doing my shingles this way is because my XPS foam hadn't arrived on time and I was getting really impatient and I was like, oh, I want to put these shingles on. As it turns out, I really like it because they've got a really real look because they are real shingles. They're real wooden shingles. They're just extremely small wooden shingles. Part of me is daydreaming about doing future builds like this and just putting a little bit of extra effort and time into getting the roofs to look really good. I don't know if I'm actually on the right tracks with that though, so maybe time will be a bigger factor. There we go, and there's another set of shingles. I might need some more. Then the way I've been gluing them is hot glue. Um, so I did ask in the uh, Tabletop Craft Guild um, for advice on how to be sticking stuff and people were right about the wisps uh, that you get with um, hot glue but for me that is something that I can deal with because of the speed at which it dries and for something like these individual shingles I need it to be a lot quicker so I just pick off the wisps afterwards little wisps of hot glue like that there we go that's all my shingles completed um, I might make a little crest to go across the top I haven't figured out how I'm gonna do that it might be cardboard it might be XPS foam just to finish off the roof 
Um, that's one job left to do. One job before I do all of that though is I am going to do what would be stucco or plaster. And so I've got this from my local DIY store today. Four pounds, UK money. I did a test run it and it's really good. Like that is quite a plastery kind of effect. I don't know if I've got it in focus there. There we go. Yep, uh, it's quite flexible. So I think that's gonna be perfect. And I'm going to use my wife's cake making tools and hope that she doesn't see this video. This is one of those parts of the job where you just go like, uh, I hope it works and I don't ruin this thing. I might have to do it in stages, we'll see. There's only one way to find out. If this ruins my building, I'm gonna be so disappointed. It's the wrong tool. Let's try this one. This is more awkward than I thought. Not because it's the wrong stuff for the job, but it's just because my application method is really crap. So I've done a bit of real life plastering in my, you know, to make, mon to make money. A bit of building here and there. Uh, and real life plastering is a lot easier than this. This is very awkward. In fact, I'm starting to think I might just use my fingers. I was really hoping this would be a quick job. Okay, I'm going to make a tool. I need a trial, and the only way I can think of doing it is by making one. So, I'm gonna make a little trial from an old tin can. Improvising a little tool. Help me spread my plaster. Okay, so that's just about done. Okay, so I'm not gonna bore you with a time-lapse of all four sides. Oh, I've just noticed my window is broken. That's tragedy. I'm gonna to have to fix that. Oh well, um, I'm going to fast forward right now to when the window is fixed and all of the stucco is done. All right, ready, steady. We're back. Okay, so now you can see I finished all the stucco effect plaster. It's dry, I love it, it looks really, really good. Um, yeah, everything's starting to come together really well. Uh, earlier this afternoon, I realized that I wanted to put a light inside the house, um, probably a little LED flicker light. Um, so I've cut the bottom, bottom out, which is really, it's gonna be really easy to put back in again. And I have stuck some parchment paper in the windows so that it's got like, a diffused light effect and I've also done a little practice piece for some epoxy resin uh, which is says it's a, a five minute drying time but I think that's for sticking things together so this is just for the window I'm going to leave that dry for probably about three hours but I think that's gonna look pretty good 
Once this is dry, I am going to attempt to peel off the, the backing. If that doesn't work, I'll just leave it on and it'll just be a diffused light window like that, um, which will work. But this is what I'm using, Araldite Crystal. Um, and I used a very, very small amount, so that's definitely going to be able to manage the other three windows. But while that's drying, the test piece is drying, I am going to do some details on the house. So I have got these little shingles that I made from stock cardboard. These are going to be for the roof, so that it looks like a real roof. You know, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do that right now in a minute. I'm also going to something that I realised that I wanted is the front that doesn't look natural, and you can see the cardboard. So I'm going to cut little beams. I've already cut this one. You can see that will go in there, and that will look better. It's probably going to make sense for me to do the beams first, because then I'm going to stick these on over the top of the beams. So. I will complete the beams, which means I need to make a second beam right now. Here we go. So that's a bit better. So next I'm going to shave off the top so it's nice and true. And then a little bit of carving to make it look less balsa wood and more beam. There we go, that's that. So now we're ready to add the shingles along the top. Not bad, not perfect, but not bad. I'm not expecting perfection on this first build. Okay, so the roof is right, all glued, solid, new little beams in place. That's the main part of the build done. The next part of the build is these windows. Okay, so let's have a look at these, this epoxy. Well, it's going to look really good whether I can take the backing off or not, so I've pretty much decided that I'm going to do it. Let's just see if it's still wet. It is still wet. I don't understand. Even though this isn't dry, um, I'm pretty happy with the effect. I'm going to have faith that it's going to dry, um, so I'm going to do this window. One dollop. I far prefer the little gun that does equal portions. Hopefully these bubbles come out. So that was a complete disaster. The Aral died, didn't cure at all. What was the point of me making a tester? This is the way my brain works. Sometimes I make silly mis uh, mistakes like that. I don't know what I did wrong. Anyway, it put me, sent me back five days. Seeped into the cardboard, all down the back. Woke up the next morning, had a look at it, and it was just horrible, so. Don't make that mistake. So I ordered a new can of epoxy. I went for Gorilla Glue because I watched a number of different people using this with success. So I've got the Gorilla Glue epoxy set in five minutes and I did a tester. The tester literally cured in five minutes. So this is what I'm gonna use for the windows. Yes, yeah, so maybe always wait until the tester dries before you apply it to the piece. Anyway, Gorilla Glue works. What I want to do is I want to seal in around these windows so that whenever I do pour the epoxy in, it doesn't get absorbed into the cardboard. I don't know if this is gonna work. I could be messing my project up here as I go, but what I've done to 
try and solve this problem is I've got myself some baking powder, some super glue. Please don't be a really bad idea. Okay, I'm just gonna try it on this little section, see how we get on. Um, it has definitely created a seal on the inside which means whenever I pour whatever epoxy in next time, it's not going to get absorbed. That's working beautifully. <gasps> Great. Thankfully, a, something, a solution that works. It seems for me that the best way to do this is to add the glue first and then tap in the, the baking powder so it gets into the right areas. Okay, so that worked out perfectly. This project is dragging on a little, but it's nearly done. So this video will be going up very, very soon. Very, very happy with it. It's really, really solid. I got a box of 42 of these for like nothing for peanuts. That's gonna look great on the inside, even through the front window. Let's actually turn this off a minute. And they flicker so it looks like someone's having a little fire. So I might actually have to do some smoke or something. I am considering making it a playable house where I lift the base and there's a small little room on the inside, but I need to figure that out. And that's it, that's the end of the building stage of this little craft project and I'm extremely happy with the result. This has turned out so much better than what I was initially hoping for. So I've decided not to pour the epoxy windows before I paint the window frames because it's going to be much easier to paint and round the window frames before I pour the epoxy. I got that tip off Colin Bressy uh, over at the Tabletop Crafters Guild on Facebook. Um, he's actually just started his own little channel called The Crazy Crafter. So yeah, please go and like his channel. He's trying to get started off as well. Um, thank you Colin for that tip. And other than that, it is ready to paint. So yeah, thanks guys for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any tips about how I can do certain parts of this build any better or future builds any better, please let me know in the comments below. I really want to learn. I'm not trying to pretend that I'm already at the best level I can be. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.